Hey, today we are continuing our series we kicked off two weeks ago called, Hey Siri, what does the Bible say about? And this series was birthed at Easter this year. If you were here at our Easter services, we gave you like a little questionnaire and we asked you this question, hey, if there was anything in the Bible that you would want us to teach on, what would it be? And it's kind of like an anything goes and it's anonymous and some of y'all wrote down some really weird stuff and we might not teach on that ever, uh, but there's some good stuff that was written in and, and, and so we're gonna take about six weeks to try to cover as best as we can the questions that you're asking and we're honestly, we're just gonna drive you straight to the Bible and uh, see what the Bible has to say. We kicked off this series week one talking about forgiveness. Come on, we all deal with it. Offense is gonna come into our lives. How do we forgive people that have hurt us? My wife preached an amazing message last week on how do we navigate um, our lives when we've experienced loss and death and heartache. What does the Bible have to say about it? Because it's, it's so painful, but we opened up God's word and my wife so beautifully talked about the hope and the peace and the goodness of God that, that heaven is waiting for us, that this life on earth is not the end. Come on, somebody. And today I wanna preach on this topic. It was one of the top two things written in. All right, this was number two. What does the Bible say about the last days? Come on, we're going there today. If you're a note taker, you're gonna wanna write some stuff down. If you're not a note taker, just go ahead and write some stuff down. You know what I'm saying? Come on, how many of you can remember when you were a kid going on a long road trip? I'm not talking about from one state to the bordering state. I'm talking like you're driving across the country, you're going up north, down south, wherever you live. How many of you have been on a road trip lately? How many of you have ever been on a road trip with a kid in the car? Maybe you were the kid when your younger years or you've been on a road trip with kids. Inevitably, if you're in the car for an extended amount of time, at some point, these words are gonna be spoken, potentially spoken multiple times. Say it with me. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Which is just the dumbest question we could ever ask. Because if we were there, we wouldn't be driving. And I think if we were honest, we would say that the church of Jesus Christ has probably, be, probably been asking this question for 2,000 years. Hey, Jesus, are, are, are we there yet? Like, are, are we in the last days? Like, are you coming back? And can we go ahead and establish that, like, the church has been asking this forever? Like, even the early disciples, like, they watched Jesus, like, ascend back to heaven after he came and died and rose again. And then, like, a couple books into the Bible, into the New Testament, they're like, so when's he coming back? You coming back? And we've been asking this question for 2,000 plus years, so really the question isn't are we in the last days, it's like are we in the last, last days? Because ever since Jesus went back to heaven, that's when the last days started. Because he said, I'm coming back, and so what we're gonna try to do today is you know, just try to answer some questions, like are we in the last days? When is Jesus coming back? I'm gonna tell you that today, I'm gonna literally give you the day that he's coming back, so write this down, okay? Well, we're gonna lay a foundation this morning. Firstly, we're gonna answer this question. How do we know that Jesus is coming back one day? This is a great question to ask. A lot of people ask this. A lot of people that maybe don't believe in Jesus ask this question. For us as followers, we just go to the Bible. Hey, Siri, what does the Bible say about Jesus coming back? I'm so glad you asked. John 14, the words of Jesus. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Hey, you believe in God? That's awesome. Believe also in me. And this is Jesus talking. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? What's Jesus doing in this moment? He's telling his disciples, I'm not gonna be with you forever, but don't let that trouble your hearts because where I'm going is actually a good place that I'm preparing, get this, for you. My wife last week so beautifully spoke about how God's intention for our lives was never death. He created Adam and Eve to be eternal beings, to never die. But because sin entered the world, death entered the world. 
How many of you know God is so good that he's like, hey, this was my original plan for you to never die. I'll create another plan called heaven where you can live forever. I always get a kick out of people that talk about heaven like, man, I can't wait to get to heaven. It's going to be good, man. I'm going to go fishing. I'm going to throw some footballs around. No, you're not. <laughs> you are going to be on your face thanking Jesus that he allowed you to be in his presence. And we're talking about forever, right? So for the first 100,000 years, you'll just be worshiping. Then maybe you can go fishing. But I'm gonna go ahead and tell you right now, you're not gonna wanna do that because you're gonna be so grateful and just wanna be around him. And if heaven sounds boring to you, you have the wrong picture of heaven. It is a celebration. And I love the fact that Jesus says, I have to go. Like, I, I gotta go because I gotta get it ready for you. Jesus is your general contractor. You understand that, right? He is building heaven for you. Oh my gosh, that's such good news. You know that I'm a pretty good parent. I need you to know that about me, all right? <laughs> Ask my three kids. I'm, a, I'm not a perfect dad by any means. I'm probably better than half the guys on this side of the room, but I'm, I'm a pretty good dad. But can I confess something to you? I don't always wanna be around my kids. Sometimes I want some alone time. Can I get an amen? amen. And that's not a bad thing. I remember going to Disney World when, when our kids were younger, and uh, it was a good day in Disney World for us. Raise your hand if you ever, ha ever had a bad day in Disney World. Ain't, ain't no rage like Disney rage, you know what I mean? And in this particular day, we were getting along, everybody was good, and it was the end of the night, the fireworks are about to happen, we kinda had our spot in the park where we were gonna watch them, and this, this mom and dad and their one kid roll up, and, and you could hear them just kinda going back and forth, and it was really the wife and the husband back and forth, back and forth, and then finally the dad looked at the kid and he just said these words, I'll never forget it. Why are you always around me? Because he's your kid, man. <laughs> I fought it. I've just never said it out loud to my kids. <laughs> what are you doing? Just let me go to the bathroom. Leave me alone. I'm so grateful that Jesus looks on and he goes, I, I actually want to be around you. So I'm going to go to prepare a place for you. And then he goes on to say these words. And if I go and I prepare this place for you, he busts out the original Arnold. I'll be back, I'm coming back. Like don't, that's, don't let your hearts be troubled. I'm not gonna abandon you, I'm coming back and I'm gonna take you to be with me that you may be where I am. And then he says these words, you know the way to the place where I am going. And he's saying this to his closest followers. And I love Thomas, he just gets straight honest with Jesus and he says these words, Lord, we have no clue where you're going. Like, you're like, you're going somewhere? You're gonna prepare? We don't know what you're talking about. How can we know the way? To which Jesus responds with these famous words you probably have heard. He answered, I am the way. It's not necessarily a place that you're going, it's who you're going through. I am the way. I am the truth in a world where we live in and we go, what's truth? Jesus is truth. Don't get it twisted. And he is life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. So if you think you're gonna stand before God one day in heaven and he goes, hey, why should you come in? And you go, well, I was a pretty good person. That is not the right answer. And if he hits you with, is that your final answer? You better go, oh, no, 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 that's not, no, no, that's not. Your answer is this, I put my faith in Jesus. In the, in, not in what I've done, in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross for my sins. I asked Jesus to come save me, to be my Lord, to be my savior. I got tired of living my own life. I wanted to follow after him. I believe in Jesus. He's changed my life, that, that, that and that alone. So come on, it's not about your good works, it's about his good work, what he did for us. Jesus said, I'm going, if you wanna come, the invitation is for all people, but the only way to get to the Father is through me. If you're here today and you've never put your faith in Jesus, I am so glad you're here today. We have prayed for you, and God wants a relationship with you, and it's possible through his son, Jesus. So, 
We know that Jesus is coming back for us. We know he's preparing a place for us. The question is, the million dollar question, when is Jesus coming back? Are you ready? I'm about to tell you the day that he's coming back. This is why you're here. For no other reason, you're like, all right, here we go. You ready? Matthew 24, Jesus. But about that day that he's coming back, or even the hour, here it is, no one knows. Yeah, but the guy on TV said, not even the angels in heaven. Listen, if there is a joker that shows up and says, Jesus is coming back on this day, you go ahead and write it down. He ain't coming back on that day. There was a brother in 1989 that wrote a book, 89 Reasons Why Jesus is Coming Back in 1989. In 1990, he wrote another book, 90 Reasons Why Jesus is Coming Back in 1990, right? And people bought it. No one knows. No one knows. The angels in heaven don't know. Get this. The son doesn't even know. Jesus himself doesn't even know when he's coming back. Isn't that wild? I don't know how it works in heaven with nights and days or sleeps or anything, but I, like, I, I picture in my mind like Jesus waking up every morning going, am I coming back today? And the father's like, nope, not today. Today? Nope, not today. Some joker down there said you were coming back on October 30th. We can't do that day because that's what he said, so we're not doing that day. Stop saying that, okay? No one knows. Only, only the Father knows. Only the Father knows. And so at the end of the day, we know he's coming back. We just don't know when. He's promised that he's prepared a place for us, and he will come again so we have to get ready, and that's what I wanna share today. How do we prepare ourselves? So then the real question that we're asking is this. Like, are we in the last days? Like, it, are we closer to Jesus coming back sooner than, than we were yesterday? And the answer to that is an obvious yes. We're closer today than we were yesterday. And tomorrow will be the same thing. Are we in the last days? And that's what I wanna do today. I wanna kinda share with you what the Bible says about the last days. And Matthew 24 is where we're gonna be for most part today. And the first thing that it says about the last days is this. There is gonna be an increase in wickedness, meaning the bad is only going to get worse. So let's read Matthew 24. And you will hear, again, these are the words of Jesus. You will hear of wars and threats of wars. Is that going on in our world right now? Absolutely it is. But remember World War I and World War II and Civil War, you know, all those other things. So people might have thought, and that's, oh, it's wars. This is Jesus is surely coming back here. And a lot of people probably believe that. And so Jesus goes on to say this, but, but don't panic. How many of you know that Jesus will sometimes give you like bad news, but then he'll give you good news? That's classic Jesus. He's like, hey, I'm gonna leave, but don't be troubled, I'm coming back. Hey, there's gonna be wars, but don't panic. Yes, these things must take place. Why is our world getting so bad? Because sin's in it. And it's only gonna get worse. But, but the end won't follow immediately. So are we in the last days? Yeah, but no. It's only gonna get worse. So as bad as it is right now, there's more to come. Nation will be go to war against nation. That's been happening for a while. There will be famines and earthquakes. We see that in many parts of the world. This is all happening and has been happening throughout history. Let's read on. But all this is only the first of the birth pains. Now, we know that giving birth isn't that big of a deal. There's nothing difficult about that. Like, what? I got to be there for all three of my children. My wife was a trooper. I'm like, girl, you got this. And, you know, it looks pretty difficult in my opinion. And, and what Jesus is saying, like, hey, all this, like this is just the beginning of the birth pains. And, 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 and like the birth of a child, like that's a process and it can drag on longer than you think. Come on, you get a gold star, women. And there's, there's more to come. 
So as bad as it is, there's, there's, there, but wait, there's more. And you will be arrested, persecuted, and killed. You will be hated all over the world. Why, why, why would they do this? Simply because you are my followers. Now, can we be very honest in church this morning? This is not happening in America right now. It's not. There is minimal persecution that's going on. Oh, you know, I'm a, I'm a Christian, I'm a blah, blah, blah. You know, they, they don't like that I said this and that. I, I get that, like there, it, it, that is real, but n- nobody's really getting arrested. Maybe little things. There were some churches that were trying to meet throughout the pandemic and everything, and some people got, like, we, we get that. Don't hear what I'm not saying. No, but nobody's getting killed. You understand? Now, this is going on in other countries, and we're gonna talk more about that. But in my heart, I look on and I go, I don't know because this is coming to America, and I don't know if the American church is ready. If I'm honest, Rise Church, I don't know if if we have prepared you enough to be ready for this. So this is preparation day right here. And this is a catalyst to go, let's wake up. Because this is coming in one way or another. Let's read on. And many will turn away from me and betray and hate each other. We're seeing that in America more than ever before. If you lived in Jacksonville long enough, you have seen where there used to be a church building, there is now a gas station. Church doors are closing across our city and across America in the world. And many false prophets will appear and will deceive many people. Sin will be rampant everywhere and the love of many will grow cold. This is a reality. It is happening in the world around us. Odds are you might even know somebody that at some point loved God with all their heart and now they're not following God at all. Maybe that's your story. Maybe that's where you find yourself and you're trying to search again for God. It is everywhere. And the American church needs to wake up and go, God, there is more that you have called us to. Can I get an amen? Amen. And if there is an increase in wickedness going on, then God has called us to separate ourselves from that. I love how Timothy breaks it down. He says, but mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. So are we in it? Yes. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, the list goes on, let's keep reading, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure, rather than lovers of God. This is the world we live in today. People would rather do what they want than follow God. You see it everywhere. People that even know the truth, they know that God has something more for them, but they are unwilling to give up this, oh, this is so fun lifestyle. They are unwilling to surrender fully to what God has called them to. And sociologists are looking at America, our society, and they are saying that we are in what they're calling late decadence, meaning we are in moral and cultural decline. Now, this is not blowing anybody's mind right now. Nobody's like, what? Are you, this is new information. Like nobody right now is thinking, I can't believe that. Because we see it, don't we? The founding fathers set up America and, you know, for whatever you believe about that, like set it on good principles. One nation under God. They weren't perfect. But since that day, our country Our society is in moral decline. Historians will tell you that there is not a single civilization or a single nation that has ever recovered from the state that America is currently in right now. Meaning, if we come out of this moral decline and we turn things around, we will be the first nation in 5,000 years to ever do it. So the odds are not very good. Historians say this, that the majority of great empires were not conquered from external enemies. They rotted from within. 
Now, I'm not throwing America under the bus. I'm just saying America needs revival. And that starts with us. We're not pointing the finger at anybody else. We're saying, God, change me first. And so we believe that in the last days, because Jesus told us that there is gonna be this increase in wickedness, but how many of you know whenever Jesus tells us some bad news, he also comes back with some good news. He also says that there is gonna be an increase in the spread of the gospel. That is the good news of Jesus. Meaning all this wickedness is gonna come, but then the gospel of God is gonna also advance. We're gonna proclaim the salvation of Jesus, that he died on the cross for the sins of the world, that he loves us, that he gives us multiple chances to receive his love and his grace and forgiveness. Jesus said this, Matthew 24. Go read the whole chapter of Matthew 24. It talks about the end times, Jesus coming back. And the good news about the kingdom will be preached, come on somebody, throughout the whole world. And all nations will hear it. And and then the end's gonna come. Which tells me that we're not there yet. Now the cool part about this is that it's almost prophetic in a sense that we live in a generation where this is actually possible because of technology. We can get through, through the power of the internet, we can literally take the gospel into all the world. This was not possible like 20, 30 years ago. So are we in the last days? Yeah, because we're getting to the point where all nations can hear about the good news of Jesus. And then he says, and then the end's gonna come, which makes me think that Jesus goes, am I coming back today? And God's like, no, there's still one more that I want to know me. I wanna give this group of people over here another chance to respond to to the good news. I I wanna give this group over here, there's unreached people groups, you understand that, in our world that have never heard about Jesus. And so God's gonna give them a chance to respond to the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so Jesus is like, am I coming back today? And in my mind, I like to thank the Father, go, no, 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 no. There's a few more that I wanna bring in. There's one more, there's one more. Every single day, there's another one, there's another one. And then Jesus is like, hey, one more person. And God's like, ah, let's do one more. At 7.55, every Sunday morning, some of the volunteers of our church gather in this room right here. We encourage each other, we laugh together, we pray for you that are coming in here. And at the very, very end, we all put our hands in the middle, we stretch our hands out, and whoever's leading, we call it our rise rally. Whoever's leading it goes one, two, three, and then everybody shouts, one more. Because we're believing that today in this place, God's gonna change one more life. Some of you have never been to the Rise Rally. You're still asleep at 7.55. I got you, hands in, ready? Come on, let's go. If we all do it, it won't be weird. One more on three. One, two, three, one more! It's almost like all of heaven's like, one more, let's do one more. And can I tell you already, during the 8.30, we already had five more. That church that we helped um, send money to in Romania that you heard my wife talk about during the offering time, they had nine more. Last night at our men's gathering, we had five more. She's like, there's a lot more happening at Rice Church, and God's like, not yet, because there's one more, one more. So, are we in the last days? Yes. How do we know we're in the last days? Because Jesus told us that an increase in wickedness, but an increase in the gospel is spreading. Can I share with you some really good news? Just some some fun statistics. In the last 23 years, from 2000 to 2023, more people, it's recorded, have put their faith in Jesus than the previous 2,000 years. So is, is the gospel of Jesus advancing? You better believe it is. And you know where it's advancing the most? In countries where it is illegal. Where, where people are being arrested, are being beaten, and are being killed. 
that's where it's spreading the most. Sometimes I think America might need a little bit of that because then that calls us like, man, I'm gonna get a little serious about my faith. So I wanna take the remaining time and I wanna try to, as best as I can, break down for you what these last days are gonna look like. And if we tried to cover everything, we'd be here for hours. So I'm just gonna do my best and I need you to lean in because you could get lost in the weeds if, if, if you don't. Matthew 24, again, it says, so when you see standing in the holy place the abomination that causes desolation, and this was penned and spoken through the prophet Daniel, let the reader understand. So let me track with you real quick. How many of you have ever read the book of Daniel? Book of Daniel, y'all know the, you know the story of Daniel? If you never read the, the book of Daniel, like you know a little bit about Daniel already, right? Like he was, he was a prisoner taken into Babylon. He was thrown into the lion's den. God shut the mouth of the lion, rescued Daniel. Like really cool story, right? His buddies were Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that were thrown into the fire. Like, yeah, cool story, cool, cool, awesome, awesome. They're also in the book of Daniel. And that's the first six chapters. Great stuff. But then the rest of the chapters get weird. Like what? Like, like literally, like am I tripping right now? Like what am I reading? And, and, and what Daniel is doing in those following chapters is he is prophetically speaking of the end times. He is prophetically speaking of the last days. And what he's saying right here is this. Go back to that verse. So when you see standing in the holy place the abomination that causes desolation, what I believe, people interpret this differently, what I believe here is he is speaking of the Antichrist, okay? So let me break this down, and again, people have different beliefs on it. This is just me, how I interpret scripture, what I believe from reading other people and learning that, that there's gonna be a time in the Middle East, and we're definitely not seeing it right now, where there is gonna be peace. So this is why I know we're not in the last, last days, is because there is no peace right now. But there is gonna be a moment where, where somebody rises up and brokers peace in the Middle East. And you're gonna think, oh my gosh, look what's going on right now. Like, this is crazy. Everything's good. And that same person, there's gonna be this temple that's built that, 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 that everybody's gonna believe is like a resurrected to God. And there's gonna be a moment where that same person who brought peace says these words. I don't know if this is in the Bible, but in my mind, this is how I think it's gonna go down. Psych. And everything that it looked like they were building turns it. And this is what Jesus is saying. When you see standing in the holy place where God should be worshiped, the Antichrist rise up, the abomination that causes desolation. Some people think it's gonna be a statue that he erects for himself or it's him himself. When you see him standing there, that's when you know it's coming. And Daniel was prophetically speaking about this. And this is where, if you don't lean in, you're gonna get lost. You ready? Okay, as best as I can. Daniel prophesies of 490 years of last days. And he breaks those 490 years into seven-year segments. And he says there are 70 seven-year segments that are gonna take place. So this is gonna happen in these seven years, and this is gonna happen in these seven years, and this is gonna happen, and he breaks it all down. You tracking with me? Okay, 490 years, seven year segments. 483 of those 490 years have already happened. There are only seven years left of what Daniel was prophesying. That's the tribulation, okay? And what the Bible speaks of of the tribulation is that there are gonna be three and a half of those seven years where everything is good. That's when the Antichrist is rise, raising up and everything looks good and we're looking to this guy and blah, 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 blah. And then all of a sudden, boom, he's gonna flip the script and it says the next three and a half years, it's gonna get bad. So that's how I know we're not there yet. I don't know when we're gonna get there, but it's gonna be pretty obvious, I think. Some people believe that Jesus is gonna call us home before those seven years even happen. Some people think that Jesus is gonna let us live through the good three and a half and then like, all right, I'm taking you home before the bad three and a half. Some people think we're rolling through the whole thing. I don't know, the Bible speaks differently and you can interpret things differently. But I'm gonna give you as best as I can, we're gonna go to the book of Daniel, chapter 12, 
And it says this, at that time, Michael, the great prince, Michael's the archangel of God, the great prince who protects your people, he's gonna rise up. And there will be a time of distress such has not happened from the beginning of nations until the end. So again, how do we know we're not in the last days yet, like the last, last days? Because we're not seeing something happen that we've never seen before. Like things are bad, but they're gonna get far, far worse. Let's read on. But at that time, your people, who's your people? Everyone whose name is found written in the book. What's the book? It's the book of life. From the moment that you put your faith in Jesus to be your Lord and your Savior, the angels in heaven go, get the Sharpie, baby. We got another name to write down. Another son, another daughter are in the family of God. If your name's written in that book, would you make some noise this morning? And here's the good news, it's gonna get bad. But if your name's in that book, you will be delivered. Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth, ooh, they're gonna awake. Some to everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting contempt. I attended two funerals this week. One I preached at, the other one I just attended. Both members of our church. You know what they were? They were homegoings. This is not the end. These people had faith in Jesus. And there's gonna come a day where their bodies, where they were laid, will be resurrected to be with God. I told my wife, I wanna be cremated. I want you to sprinkle me across the world. I wanna make it hard for God. I need to get a little bit of Adam over here and a little bit of Adam over here. I gotta bring them all back together. I don't know how it works. Some to everlasting life, some, some to shame and everlasting contempt. Like heaven and hell are real. It's God's will that none should perish, but all should believe in him. Let's read on. Those who are wise, come on, let's be wise, church, will shine like the brightness of the heavens. And those who lead many to righteousness, come on, like the stars forever and ever. In a world where wickedness is rising up, may the church of Jesus Christ shine so bright that there is not like somebody looks on, like, like wouldn't it be crazy if the world looks on at you and go, I'm not sure if they're a Christian. I'm not sure if they're a follower of Jesus. I mean, they should look on and go, man, that person is more kind, more patient, more loving, more forgiving, more self-controlled than anybody I've ever met. They might not believe in the God you believe in, but they see the difference in you. We should shine. Shine like, not blend in. We're not better than anybody. We're not judging people. We're just shining our light, saying this is what God did for me. He can, he can do it for you. Come on, let's read on. I heard, I heard what he said, but I did not understand what he meant. This is every man in our church's verse right here. I heard what she said, but I didn't know what she meant. <laughs> I love Daniel. He's like, I'm just being honest, God. Like, I hear you talking about it. I have no clue what you're talking about. How will all this finally end, my Lord? And God's like, I just told you. So then God's like, he reads on, he said, but God said, go now, Daniel. For what I have said is kept secret and sealed until the time of the end. Let's keep going. Many will be purified, cleansed, and refined by these trials. Like it's actually, like some people are gonna come out of these trials and they're actually gonna love God. But the wicked, they're just gonna keep doing what they've always been doing. They're gonna continue in their wickedness and none of them will understand. And they're, not, they're blinded. They, they don't, they don't wanna understand. They, they wanna just keep doing what they're doing. And the way we say it around here at our church is like, you can either be the king of your life or you can let Jesus be king. He's a much better king than you are. So surrender your, your kingdom to his kingdom. And only those who are wise will know what it means. Like the wisdom will allow us to see things differently. Allow us to wake up. Dan, you can join me up on the stage. Second Peter, closing words. But the day of the Lord, man, it's gonna come like a thief. If I told you, Rise Church, hey, tonight, a thief's gonna break into your house. They're gonna try to come in and steal what's yours. They're gonna try to harm your family. How many of you would be sitting on your rocking chair, your lazy boy, your couch with a shotgun in your hand? And I'm just talking to the women in our church at this point, like... <laughs> Let's go, not my house. <laughs> if I told you a thief was coming, you would be prepared, wouldn't you? Jesus said, 
I'm coming like a thief. So let's be prepared. Well, what's he coming to steal? Us. He's like, hey, hey, nobody knows when I'm coming. And I'm just going to grab you and we're going to get out of here. Come on, Lord Jesus. I'm ready. And the heavens, they're going to disappear with a roar. The elements, that's the earth that we let be destroyed. All the earth and everything done in will be laid bare because God said, I'm creating a new heaven. I'm creating a new earth. I think even the heaven that our loved ones are in right now is not the final heaven because he's, he's going to create something brand new even for them. He's always doing something new. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? I'm so glad. This is a great question. What kind of people should we be? Come on, Peter, good question. You ought to live holy in godly lives. You're not to look like everybody else. You're not to talk like everybody else. We don't act like everybody else. Man, we're different. We let holiness and godliness come out of our lives. We want to be more like you, Jesus. Are we gonna be perfect? No, we're gonna stumble, we're gonna fall, but we're not gonna stay there. We're gonna let the grace, the mercy, and the forgiveness of God pick us up, put us back on that path to run after him. Better yet, we're gonna run together. Live holy and godly lives as we look forward to the day of God. And here it is right now, I bet you didn't know this. We can actually speed its coming. Because again, the Father in heaven is looking down going, one more, one more. Okay then God, how can Rise Church be a part of one more? Okay God, how can my life be a part of one more? Okay God, what can I do to help you come back a little bit quicker? We prepare our hearts. We ask God to use us. We share the hope that we have in our own lives with others. We point people to Jesus, amen? amen? But for some of us, we're gonna need to wake up because we're asleep spiritually right now. Prepare. I'll preach it like this. We ain't scared. We're prepared. <laughs> don't, hey, don't be afraid that Jesus is coming back like a thief. Let that encourage you. I used to be, I used to think like, oh, he's coming back, he's coming back. The thing that used to scare me now gives me the greatest hope and the greatest comfort. Thank you, God, that you are coming. You're coming back. Every head bowed, every eye closed. We believe the Spirit of God is in this place. I believe that God is moving in your hearts, drawing you closer to Him. And right now, in this moment, we want to give one person, one more, an opportunity to respond to Jesus, whether you're in house or you're watching online. If today you would say, I've never put my faith in God. I've never asked Jesus to save me, to be my Lord, to be my Savior, to rescue me from my own life, the mess that I have made, but today is my day. Come on, Jesus died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again to conquer everything that the enemy's trying to bring against you in your life. Jesus has a plan and a purpose for you. Would you surrender your heart to him today for the first time ever? And with nobody looking around, if that's you in this place, I'm gonna count to three and I'm gonna ask you to get bold this morning and just shoot your hand in the air and say, that's me. I am putting my faith in Jesus today. Come on, this is your moment. One, two, three. Anybody in the house today? Come on, praise God. Let's go, I see it. I see your hand. Come on, let's go. Come on, praise God. Hey, if you're raising your hand right now, every head bowed, every eye closed, but if you raise your hand, just make eye contact with me right now. Right now, let's go. Let's go. Come on. God loves you. You're the one more. You're the one more. He, he brought you here today because he wanted you to bring, be a part of his family. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Church family, look at me. It don't get any better than this. It don't get any better than this. It don't get any better than this. I wish somebody would stand up on their feet and give God the highest praise this morning.